back to my channel. This is Joni Young. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this covered bridge in winter. We're working on a 16 by 20 stretched double primed canvas today. I'm going to be using a number 50 filbert brush to cover the background with and paint some trees and water. The colors we're going to be using today are prism violet, purple, and light blue violet. I'll also be using some slate gray and some titanium white. And lastly, some neon orange. If you don't have these specific colors, um, ask me in the comments below for alternatives and I'll provide you with a few ideas for other colors that you can use. So to get started, I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet first. I'm going to take a little bit of gray and I'm just going to start pulling some streaks across the sky, purposely making this patchy so that I can add the other colors where the canvas is still showing. Gonna add a little bit down here as well. Pick up a little bit of water if you need to help spread that paint around. It's best to add a little bit more water than paint, otherwise you may apply too much paint to your canvas. Okay, the next color I'm going to add is a little bit of white. And I'm going to take a little bit of my neon orange and blend the white in with that. I'm going to start up here and start sweeping some brush strokes in between and slightly blend over the wet gray paint. Again, leaving some spaces for the blue and the purple. And sometimes for a little bit more movement in the sky, I like to pull my brush strokes on an angle like this and sweep up. I'm going to wash all that paint out of my brush and we're going to come in with our, our blue, purple, and a little bit of white. I'll take a little bit of white first. Then I'm just going to come right in here and have a little bit of each color. And I'm going to go just halfway down the canvas. I'm not really thinking too much about placement. Just add a little bit of those colors. Here and there. You can create those little sweeping scoops. And then softly go over them to get rid of any harsh lines. Remember that the acrylic paint will dry uh, one to two shades darker than what you're initially seeing as you first apply it. So uh, just be careful with how much 
of the dark colors you're adding. Okay, I'm taking those colors again, and I'm gonna come down here where I know we're gonna have our flowing river creek bed. I'm gonna be a little bit more generous with my darks, so less white. And I'm gonna to start to pull my brush stroke over to the left here, and then start to pull it back right into the center and over to the right. This is gonna give me that movement and add a little bit more interest with the flow of the river. I'm gonna take a little bit more of my purple and blue now. And by adding this over the wet paint, I can get a few different softer tones of each shade. And I'm doing these round shapes um, because I know I'm gonna have those uh, round shaped snow covered rocks here on the side. So I'm starting to just block in the shapes and the colors one layer at a time. I want to have some bigger rocks here in the foreground. So I'm going to make a much bigger circle or oval shape right here. And then some smaller ones. And you can use um, a smaller brush to do this if you want. And I, I will later when I'm adding the final touches and uh, the snow. I'm gonna come in here and add some more depth in the water. Some more of the purple and the blue. Right, the next thing I want to do with this same brush is take both of these colors again, a little bit of water. Uh, this will just help the paint flow out of my brush a lot easier. And what I'm going to do is just create an instant forest here. So on this first line that we initially added, I'm going to just turn my brush up like this, line it up flick. So see how I'm doing that? I'm just kind of just flicking my wrist up like this. A little bit more water. You can also do this with a flat brush or a fan brush. Now if you want to make them taller, then you're going to pull up with your whole arm. Now we know we're going to have some uh, all the way across and behind the bridge. And we can start adding our tree trunks in now just by turning our brush over like this. We can have a few uh, taller trees here, maybe some that are on an angle. Okay, we'll just do a few like that. And then I am gonna switch over to a smaller um, filbert brush. I'm gonna use uh, number 12. Again, I'm gonna get it a little bit wet and I'm gonna take those colors again 
a little bit of that blue purple and we'll start at the top I'm gonna to leave a little space before I begin my little branches pick up some more here and then we're gonna travel down side to side tapping and then just making them slightly bigger and wider on the bottom then load your brush up and we'll start coming in with the next tree now there's a few ways you can paint your trees and growing up in the Rockies the winters there we get so much snow that the trees are really the branches are uh, heavily weighed down and so to start making that look before we add the white for our snow we can tap and kind of curve slightly and that will give a natural bow to these branches it all depends on what kind of a tree you want and how much snow you want to have on your trees now if you want to have a bit of a lighter shade or maybe just um, add a little bit less purple more blue for some smaller trees just less pressure you can also change your brush to a smaller one I have uh, probably about 15 different sizes, different filbert brushes on hand. I recommend having two to three different sizes of each brush. It's really helpful. And we'll come in with the next one. And we know that the bridge is gonna be covering up part of this, but we'll just keep going. water help loosen some of that paint out you don't want to let that paint sit in your brush because it will start to ruin the the brush got to keep an eye on that it will come in here and I've got a lot of um, painting tutorials on winter scenes uh, I've got some if you're into painting Christmas ornaments I painted scenes like this on ornaments uh, for over 25 years and I've got two to three tutorials here on my channel in my winter and Christmas playlist um, and if you're not into Christmas you can just paint the scenes on anything I would paint them on rocks plaques um, flower pots Okay, so I'm gonna come in now and add a little bit more paint to my brush. And let's have this tree going right off the canvas. I'll just make it a little bit thicker. And we'll start our branches. Right on the top of the canvas because we can't see the top, right? So because this is a bigger tree, I'm gonna push and tap for thicker branches. Now, right now it looks like it's in the foreground. You can decide if you want it to be in the foreground. And if you don't want it to be in the foreground, then just go right over it. Right over it like that. And that'll put it back there and we'll finish on this side I like to try to make each tree a little bit different and unique I have fun painting trees especially when I've painted as many as I have I have to keep it interesting. So I like to add character to my trees. I like to make them sometimes look a little whimsical. Okay, I'm gonna come down here as this has had a little bit of time to uh, dry. I can start coming in with a little bit more shadow.
I'm not worried about coming over those rocks because those aren't finished yet. I, it's just uh, some <laughs> blobs and shapes there for placement. Choose a little bit more blue at times too because all these colors are very complementary. I'm going to take a few minutes to dry this off and then we can start adding the layers of snow on our trees and our rocks and then we can come in with um, our bridge. Okay so now that it's dry uh, we're ready to come in and start adding our snow. So I've got a clean number 12 filbert brush here again and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna push and wiggle Make sure that my brush is all spread out. And I like to add a lot of snow to my trees. So you can add a little bit less if you want. If you want more of a frosty look, then just use less paint. So again, just little taps over those existing branches. So the, the less you push and less paint you use will change up how much snow you have. So this is more of a light snow, kind of a frosty look, and I'm gonna change it over to what I prefer. Heavy, heavy snow. <laughs> Just reminds me of uh, the winters I experienced growing up. Okay, and now we'll come over to this side and this one's going to be really, see how much paint I've got on my brush. Once this dries, it will leave a texture. I like this little tree back here, so the color that's very soft and delicate. Use just a little bit less that paint or the white. Now we know the bridge is going to come over right about there. At this point, I'm not sure how high I'm going to bring it up or how tall it's going to be, so uh, just to be safe, I'll go down a little bit lower than I think I need to. So it's always easier to cover something up than go back and add those background details to your trees and landscapes. Uh, it can be done, but it's a little bit tricky especially for beginners. Okay, and we'll start right off the top of the canvas here, because we've of course got this big, big tree. Now you can add the snow to wet paint underneath of course if you want uh, that would be really pretty too sometimes I do that purposely so that I pick up those other colors and I have a feeling that's going to happen yet yeah, right here because the purple I added here is thicker and you get some soft mid-tones when you do that it's quite nice you can add a little bit of 
white to the tree trunk as well if you want. Just a little line indicating there's some snow right on the tree trunk there. And finally, onto our last tree. Tap, tap, tap. Nice, gentle brush strokes. It's really effortless with a filbert brush like this. So we'll tap and gently pull for the base here as well. Maybe create some low-lying little scoops and then pull. This will just make it look like we've got some snow on the top of our bridge here. Okay, and now we can come in with uh, the snow on the rocks. So I'm just going to start here under the bridge. I'll just add, oh, I need a little bit of water on the brush here. A little bit here in the distance. And I'll be a little bit more generous. And for the smaller ones here, uh, I'm going to use a smaller filbert brush. This way we have more control. So just getting my brush right into that white paint. You don't have to get it wet first, but you can if you want. I don't think we really need to. When I add these uh, snow-covered rocks, I'm going to leave some spaces and I'm going to add a few in the water as well. So just half circles because the other half of them is in the water, of course. And you can make them different shapes. Remember to change it up so they're not all going the same direction. Some are going to come up a little bit taller. But the reason why you want to have them smaller here in the distance is just for that reason, because you're creating distance and perspective. So things farther away appear smaller. Now, depending on how much white you add, if you're adding more of a transparent water down white over these existing colors. They're going to dry a little bit darker, which is nice too, because we don't know there's shadows falling um, the landscape uh, from different directions. So it'll look more natural if you have different tones. Now I'm just going to start making some lower line or laying ones here. And then come in and start making some larger ones and you can kind of scumble around it gives you more of a a powdery look to some of your rocks here and I'm saying add small ones for the distance but you occasionally have those little ones that are in the foreground too but these ones here on the side are going to start to get bigger. So I'm going to have a big one right here. I'm going to come right over top of that one. That's going to set that in the, in the distance or behind it and give it a layered look.
Okay, so we've got some perspective happening now. I'm going to do some little, little dabs and scoops to make that look far away. I've got a little bit of blue and purple on this plate here from earlier. I could use that to tint my white with. And create a few soft purple shades or soft blue shades. And then remember where you want it to be bright, bright white. Just add a little bit more paint, but gently when adding those highlights. Otherwise, the paint won't stick. You'll just be pushing off. Uh, the paint underneath. So I'll do a few more uh, small ones here, gradually getting bigger, and I want to layer over. And it can be a little bit scary, I know, painting over top of things, I know is a tough one. Pick up a little bit of my blue here. I've got a lot of purple going on and I want to incorporate a little bit more of this soft, icy blue. Oh, that's pretty. Shades of winter are so pretty and delicate, especially when you have the uh, soft sunrise or sunset. Could have a little creek flowing in here. For a little creek, I'm going to use an angle brush, uh, number 10, angle or dagger brush, they're known as. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet and I'm just going to slide in. So I've got a little ridge of paint on the tip of my brush here. And just like my last covered bridge, I don't know if you guys got to see it, but it's a covered bridge in fall. So I'm going by that um, composition and that painting, just changing the season. Thought it would be fun. And there's a creek in it there as well. So I'm going to follow. Follow that and add it in here too. Then we could just have it. wherever you want here, and then cut in after with some rocks. Have fun creating it and worry about the sense it makes after. That's, that's my motto. Fun first and then make it work somehow after. A lot of times we worry too much and stress too much about how it should look and if we're doing it right and then we end up leaving it out altogether. So I'll put a rock there, Maybe another one right here. We've got that one. Let's just make that one larger one. And I'm going to go back into that blue. And I can start adding some rocks around here. And to really make it look like Those little waterfalls are nestled in there. We've got to add some rocks slightly above. And so you're going to have to go over top of part of those waterfalls. So here, bring this one up. 
and then have another one here. Just kind of scumbling out the last bit of paint right there. And then of course we've got our big guy right here in the front. Scumble gently. I know it sounds a lot rougher than what I'm actually doing with my brush. It's just very noisy, so it sounds like I'm pushing hard, but I'm not. There's no need to. If you've got enough paint on your brush, you don't have to push hard. I'm gonna add a highlight up here. Snow is gonna make it look round, so uh, if you really want it to look nice and round, then use a filbert brush, and I'll probably come in after. And then we'll just create a, a little bit of movement here from that creek. We'll add a little bit here in the middle, keeping it dark closest to the rocks for those natural shadows. I'm going to rinse out all of the paint out of my brush, leaving it just a little bit damp. And we're going to loosen some of this paint up and sort of just play around with it. So we've got a pretty winter scene here right now and we haven't even added our bridge yet. I'm going to take a little bit more of my white. and add some highlights here. I'm gonna take that line off there, catch that drip. Gently very gently take off a little bit of that paint here i like giving the water sort of gentle movement and it'll Give it that cool winter icy feeling when you add just a little bit of straight white or tinted white in the center. This helps to create all those shades, light to dark, shadow highlights. For a little bit more depth, I like to take a little bit of my dark colors I'm working with, in this case, prism violet and a light uh, blue violet, and just go right underneath the rocks. a little bit more shadow like that.
Okay, so I'll leave that for now. We'll go back to that later with final highlights and we'll start working on our bridge. I'm gonna do or apply a dark line right underneath. And then we need a little wall that comes down. Okay, on either side. And I'm just going to take my, one of my brown brushes here and I'll put a, a rock right in front. Of the base here. There we go. Oh, I'm going to add another little rock right there. I'm going to add a little bit of snow to the side, a little skip of snow. Okay, back to my angle brush here. I'm going to steady my pinky right here where I know it's dry. Take a bit of that blue, lightly pull. And with purple, go right under. And then we'll have a little bit of a shadow from that so I'll just take a little bit more here right there oh let's try again a little bit more paint okay there we have a shadow and I'm going to turn my brush this way and right at the base here we'll have another shadow Just correct those lines a little bit here. Okay, so now we can start painting um, the bridge. Now, one thing that would actually be really nice is to dry all of this snow and add a little bit of uh, a white mist over top part of it that would set that in the distance too so I'm gonna try to get this dried off as much as I can and lightly uh, I'll do uh, one filter over just to show you guys how pretty that will look okay that's dry the only part yeah that's still a little bit wet I'm gonna be probably covering that up with the bridge so I'm gonna actually just use that existing white paint. I've got a number 30 filbert brush. You can use any kind of blending brush that you have. And I'm just going to take a little bit of this, just a little bit of white here. And I'm going to start I'm going to need a little bit more. And we're going to take this one step further. A little bit of that peach color. So we're gonna tint our white very, very lightly though. Now we're gonna, not gonna use that much paint. So I like to just, if I have too much paint on my brush, I get most of it off on a towel 
And now we can come in here and let's just come in gently. See where we're at color wise. So that's nice and soft. It almost gives it a, a look of snow back there too. Gonna give that really soft powder feeling and create a little bit more ambiance in the lighting. We won't add it everywhere, just the distance. Right down here is past the bridge, like those trees. So just in this area here, we're gonna add a little bit of that. So I think that looks quite pretty. And I'll just show you now how I have this me as well because I've got this brush we could add some warm highlights to the snow add a little bit more white there And then add a very light sweep for the water. So just adding a little bit of this peach here and there can be really pretty in a winter painting. And you can always go back in and I'll add a little bit right now to balance out Some of that warmth, add a little bit of blue. Especially for a shadow. I'm just using a really thick round brush. This one I don't use very often, but this is number seven, if you're curious. A little bit more blue here in the water. bit of purple this time. Okay, now as promised, we'll work on the bridge. And don't be afraid, you guys, it's so much easier than, I know you're all afraid, but don't be, because it's so much easier than you think it's gonna be. I just noticed that at some point I went over that. 
So I'm going to bring that line back there. Just tidy up where I went over a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna be using a flat brush. I've got this flat right here, it's a number eight. I'm gonna take purple, make sure I have it mostly. You can take a bit of blue with it too. I just did, so you can use both colors if you want, but primarily keep it darker. So less blue, more of the purple. So our bridge is gonna be right here. We're gonna line it up. I'm just gonna cut over. And there we have a rectangle. We'll paint it in. Pull. And this is going to make it look like those strips of wood. I mention this a lot when I'm uh, teaching you guys, but when you're struggling with feeling overwhelmed, painting, whether it be animal, buildings, like structures, or people, um, just tell yourself you're painting shapes, not things. It's something that's really helped me. I got that advice uh, many years ago, and it really, really helped me because it just simplifies the whole idea and the whole process of it. And it's what? It's the secret of many famous, well-known artists. Some artists have even been known to turn the image upside down. And then it changes how they're looking at it and how they're painting it. When they're finished, they turn it right side up. Now we're going to add a triangle, just go past, have it overhang a little bit on either side. Take a little bit of that blue, a little bit more of the blue with the purple. Now you can either, I'm gonna leave a little space. You can either pull it like that, like we first did, or you can pull in lines like this. I find that doing it quicker makes it a lot easier for me. But if you want yours to look a little bit Thicker, it all depends on what kind of a look you're after for the exterior of your bridge. I'm gonna take more purple. I'm gonna start working on the entrance of our bridge, okay? It's gonna be lighter on this side, my little flat brush I had earlier. And now that it's just about all dry, we can come in with the lighter parts on the front of our bridge. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more of that blue and purple. I'm gonna go inside.
So I'm going to be thinner here just for the angle that it's on. Or you can make it the same on both sides if it makes it easier for you. Okay, then I'm going to take some purple and I'm going to go right underneath that roof line for a shadow. I'll add another layer and then pull and flick, short little flicks. I think I brought that down a little bit too far so I can easily go over that with a little bit of the light blue. And now we're going to come in, just tap in. This is the perfect. So this one is a number four. And this is kind of the perfect width for a little angle. lines on either side. And then I'm going to just lightly pull in oh, a little bit more purple. We're going to see a little bit of light on the inner wall. And then I'm just going to make this stand out a little bit. Outline. There we go. It's all these little touches that are going to make a difference. Take the time. And then darker right in here as it would naturally be darker right there, okay? I'm gonna go right underneath here. We're gonna have our roof, but we need to have a shadow as well, right under our roof line here. It helps, again, to steady your pinky on the canvas, keep and make sure that it's dry. And the shape of our roof, slightly down and overhang. Maybe not that much. Let's bring it down a little bit lower. And take some of that off. I'm just going to go over to a larger flat brush. A longer one. That way I can adjust that quicker and easier. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of blue and a little bit of white. And we'll start the first layer of our snow-covered bridge. And I like to be generous when applying the snow, just like I did for my trees. We're going to come right up to the roof line there. I'm going to overhang my snow a little bit. And then you really want to be mindful of how you load your brush for fine edges. So I kind of wiggle and then slide. And then for the outer Roof line on the other side.
And it's up to you how much you want to add or how low you want to take it. Now, if you take it low like that, you can come back in and adjust the shadow underneath, of course. Very easy to do. So I'll just take some more of that purple. Pull. And then just little flicks. You could even make it look like there's some icicles hanging like that. Turn your brush sideways like this. And I'm going to do the same down here on the edge so you can create little swoops, little icicles. A little bit of snow there on the side. Take just a little bit more white here. A little bit more white. right off the top. And finish it off with a little bit of snow on that side as well. I'm going to add indication of those little windows, narrow, narrow little windows inside of the bridge you sometimes see. Just little lines. Take a little bit more of my purple here and slightly dull the other ones. The brightest one would be here, right? I think I'm going to add a little rock or two right here. 
before I add a branch, a snow covered branch. And that'll be the, the finishing touch. Add a little shadow right underneath. And now I'll use this brush for my branch. Take a little bit of purple and blue. I think I'll have it coming down right here. And I'm gonna just twist, pull, twist, pull. When you're a little bit shaky, it'll make your branches bigger, or better I mean. It'll make them look more natural. A little bit of white. There, just sort of camouflage where it starts and ends. Now with a bunch of white on the tip of my brush, I'm gonna do the same technique. Barely touching. And I wanna add another little branch coming down there looked like it was missing something okay and then we're going to start the snow off of the other one i need a lot of paint to make this just straight titanium white to make this stand out Maybe we'll have some snow even hanging over like this. Add a little bit more purple here because it's too see-through. We need to make sure it looks nice and solid. Barely touching the canvas, little pressure. Switch over quickly to my liner brush so I can get a narrower finish to this branch and a little bit more of that white on there. Well, the only thing missing is a little snowbird somewhere. Add a little bit more white before I call this one all done.
And the very last thing, and I'm just deciding, spur of the moment here, optional, but I really wanna add some snow. So this is what I like to use for snow and stars in my paintings. You wanna get it, dunk it right in the water, give it a little tap, and then I'm gonna go into my white paint here, scumble it all around, tap off any excess, and I place my thumb on this side, my finger over top, and you're gonna pull and flick wherever you want there to be snow. So I think that's quite pretty. So this painting is all done. I enjoyed showing you guys how to create this one. Can't wait to see your versions. Check out the links below for where you can share and sign up for more of my tutorials and extra content. Have a wonderful day, happy painting, and I'll see you all very soon in another video. Bye!